Hello heroes and villains, welcome to Multiverse. So as some of you may have noticed, Daybreak has been acquired by another studio called the uh, Enad Global 7. I have to admit, I'm not very familiar with, with what we're do they're doing, but from what I understand, they're already producing some games. So uh, I guess uh, them purchasing Daybreak is not too much of a surprise. Uh, also, for quite some time, we've seen Daybreak uh, working really hard to be able to rebrand their studio. Uh, their gaming studio like uh, and also they've rebranded each uh, each different game sort of and uh, they've created uh, independent studios with e for each of, uh, of their games like for example this universe online now is uh, is dimensional Inc uh, there's a like a, what was it dark paw for uh, for everquest so they pretty much uh, rebranded they were working really hard behind the scene to rebrand everything and uh, now we can see why I sort of could have suspected something like that. I, I went through that in the past with various studios I worked at. Uh, so whenever you see you see them trying to rebrand uh, rebrand the studio, uh, sometimes it's just them uh, trying to make it more appealing for potential buyers. And uh, as we can see right now, that's that's exactly what this was. Uh, what can we expect for DC Universe Online? In the short term, probably not much, although already things have been uh, starting to change, like we already saw Nerd of Prey uh, leaving this, uh, apparently Nerd of Prey already left uh, Daybreak. Uh, did, is it a coincidence? Did she happen to leave Daybreak and then the Daybreak uh, got purchased? Did she leave Daybreak because they got purchased? Uh, there's no way to know at this point. Maybe in one year we'll find out that nah, she was planning to leave uh, all along. And uh, she left to go into to work on uh, some sort of dream project or something. Um, I guess we'll have to wait to find out. But uh, in the short term, it probably won't change anything at daybreak. But uh, in the long term, obviously, there will be changes. Uh, the, the first change is usually there's some sort of uh, restructuration. Uh, usually, they'll get rid of uh, what is known as redundancies. Uh, for example, I assume that... Uh, EG7 already has, let's say, their accounting department, and uh, Daybreak probably has also an accounting department. Uh, odds are someone will think that uh, uh, the accounting department at Daybreak is uh, redundant, seeing how EG7 already has their own department. It could be that they, they would merge the two together, and that would be the end of it. Uh, it could be that they'll just uh, transfer some of the people from Daybreak and get rid of the rest. Or it could just be, they could just decide to get rid of the whole accounting department from Daybreak and just uh, have uh, the EG7 accounting department uh, do the work instead. Uh, the same would be true for a legal department or a whole bunch of other departments. Uh, for the game designers, it would be a bit different. Uh, it might take a while before we see some sort of turnover in the, the gaming department. So you can assume for the next year, I would say the, the, the dev team will probably remain the same. But uh, don't be surprised if by, by next year, uh, at the same time next year, if, uh, there, if there's some sort of turnover in the, the dev team, uh, that, that's quite possible. Obviously, they will announce a new creative director uh, at some point. Uh, if they, I guess if they announce someone from within uh, Daybreak, that's already at Daybreak, there probably won't be too many changes. Like, let's say, for just for the fun of it, let's say Meps becomes the new creative director. I kind of doubt it, but you never know. Uh, let's say Meps becomes the new creative director, then there probably wouldn't be much changes uh, at Daybreak. But if someone, if a, a new creative director comes from the outside, if let's say EG7 name one of their own people as the new creative director, then we might expect uh, within the next year we might expect uh, some changes in the in the design team uh, because uh, sadly whenever there's a new boss very often the new boss will uh, will want to have their own people on the floor as opposed to the people who were there under the previous uh, administration uh, something I have experience with again uh, not too long ago we had a new a new director and uh, the new director decided that uh, she wanted to have her own team, so she, she hired her own team and got rid of the team of the, the previous director. It's sad, but it happens. So depending on who they nominate as a creative director, uh, we could expect like in, in one year, in next year that to, to have some sort of turnover and uh, some of the devs to be replaced with, uh, with the team from, for, that the new director will have uh, selected. Uh, again, we'll have to wait and see. 
Uh, if we take it as an example, when uh, when Spittle uh, left and was replaced with the Nerds of Prey, we didn't notice any any changes uh, uh, at the time. At least I don't remember any changes at the time. But as time went by, there's uh, quite a few faces that uh, sadly left the company and that were replaced with uh, fresh new faces. So. Uh, if, if there's a new boss, even even if uh, the boss comes from from inside, we'll probably see a few a few changes. Uh, but then, then again, I suspect that if the boss comes from within daybreak, we don't see, we won't see too many changes. But if the boss does come from uh, the the EG7 company, then yeah, there, there's there's probably going to be some sort of uh, house cleaning for 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 lack of a better word. And sadly, often that happens. Uh, I'm not very familiar with the business model from the EG7 games uh, so far. I, I took a quick look at their website, but uh, I don't really, uh, don't really know much about their games. Uh, they might decide to bring some of their, uh, let's say, business model to DC Universe Online in the, in the long term. Uh, if you guys remember when Jaxter joined uh, DC Universe Online, Jaxter was from uh, uh, Neverwinter before. He had worked on the, the game uh, Neverwinter. And uh, one of the things he brought from Neverwinter was the artifact system. The artifact system we have is not exactly like in Neverwinter, but it, it you can tell it's uh, it was inspired directly from that. So I guess we could expect uh, maybe some of the business models from the uh, the current EG7 games uh, to be imported into DC Universe Online. Uh, in the short term, we probably won't see anything like that. But also in the long term, we'll, we'll probably see a few changes uh, based on that. Again, we're going to have to wait and see to, to see what happens. Uh, also, for some time, we had been hearing rumors that uh, apparently DC Universal 9 had signed like a 10-year deal with the PS5 to, to be on the PS5. And uh, seeing uh, seeing what our friend uh, Pandarus here is saying about the, the next 10-year, uh, that seemed to sort of confirm that. So I guess we could expect uh, DC Universal 9 to stick around for quite some time. From what I understand, uh, the game is quite uh, profitable under the current conditions. And uh, also, it's something I mentioned uh, in a previous video, I think it, it's in my PS5 video. Uh, PS5 will need content. Uh, one of the problems we had with PS4 when PS4 launched, there wasn't enough content for the PS4. They were able to, to patch it up with a, a PS Now, but then PS Now, it, it was another service that you had to pay uh, on a monthly basis. It wasn't, it wasn't a very ideal uh, situation. Uh, and we can see PS5 could probably run into the same the same issues. There, there probably there might not be that much content uh, for PS5 at least uh, at first, uh, which probably is why also a lot of PS4 games are actually uh, going to be av available in PS5. Uh, PS5 need content, so I'm not surprised if they they wanted to keep uh, this universe online around because they do they do need content. Uh, and also, uh, there's also AT&T, who's uh, uh, certainly a bit, uh, let's say they need cash. So, uh, if, if DC Universe Online is a, a nice uh, revenue stream, I could see uh, AT&T wanting to keep uh, DC Universe Online around for quite some time. Because they do they do need the money. Uh, Warner, Warner, and especially DC Comics, aren't doing too well. So, uh, so any uh, every penny counts, as they say. So I pretty much suspected that uh, DC Universe Online would stick around for at least uh, some time. Uh, obviously, this probably will not uh, shut up the, the naysayers. There's people who are uh, determined to say that DC Universe Online is dead and uh, it will disappear any day now or that it will be replaced with uh, DC Universe Online 2 or something like that. But uh, from this, uh, this letter so far, it seems to suggest that there are long-term plans for DC Universe Online. So DC Universe Online uh, shouldn't go away anytime soon. But obviously, uh, this could be just uh, some uh, PR uh, speak, and uh, maybe tomorrow this universe online will shut down. I guess we'll have to wait and see if to, to find out. And uh, also, there's some big plans for the 10th anniversary of DC Universe Online. Uh, in January is going to be the 10th anniversary of DCUO, and uh, we've known we we could sort of expect that it would be something special. Uh, normally, every year we have the anniversary event, but this year being the 10th anniversary, uh, we should. Be able to get something special so we'll uh, we'll get some more information uh, soon enough about that and uh, if you remember last year last year the anniversary event was uh, not just the anniversary event but the anniversary gift we usually get on uh, january 11th if i recall correctly so on january 11th last year we got we got quite a few a few goodies it was a, it was a good year and this year being the the 10 year anniversary 
uh, I think we could expect even more this year. So just to let you know that uh, Daybreak is in the process of being acquired by EG7 and uh, to give you a bit of my, my perspective on the matter. If you have any questions, feel free to ask so in the comment section down below and I'll see what I can do about answering your questions. I have roughly 2,000 videos about this Inverse Online at this point, so if I don't answer a question right away, just search in my videos. Odds are, I already made a video that answered your question. Or click one of the videos that you see on your screen right now. Bye-bye.